Hi everybody and welcome to Talk Gnosis. For this series of episodes we have Bishop Timothy Mansfield of the Apostolic Joanite Church and he's going to talk with us about the body, the mind, the soul, the brain, the heart, the spirit, and all of these things and how these various uh, ancient groups and modern groups view these different distinctions of the human person. Uh, we're going to spend, spend a particular amount of time talking about how the ancient world viewed these concepts, more especially Gnostic worldviews like the Sethians and the Valentinians. And then towards the end, we're going to segue a bit into a discussion about how the mind and the body experiences uh, meditative practices. So you're going to want to catch all of that, watch all the way to the end, where we'll give you a preview of what part two will be like. All this and more coming up on Talk Gnosis. Bishop Tim, in the uh, West, the prevailing religious and secular idea is that there's uh, there's a brain, like in science, right? Mm -hmm. Or in religion, numerous religions in the West, it's it's a soul, and that's kind of the real self, and it drives the body around, kind of like a driver drives a car. Is this is this a Gnostic view, this sort of mind body duality, where where the mind is the real self, and it's just uh, piloting around this uh, you know this hump of flesh? It's a really interesting question. Um, I mean, there's a couple of things that are packed into your your way of asking the question. One is um, one is when you line up the brain with uh, the mind, um, and that's interesting because the the brain is fundamentally not. When we talk about mind or the soul, we're fundamentally talking about an experiential reality. So we're talking about our experience of our own interior self. Um, you don't experience your brain. You know about the brain because people cut heads open and they look at brains and you can test brains and measure brains. But that's fundamentally an exterior perspective on a human being. This is not about Gnosticism. It's just, I'm splitting, I'm kind of splitting hairs, but it's an important distinction. In particularly in the last 20, 30 years, we've started saying, you know, people say, um, you know, when they're stressed or anxious on a, on a certain day, they say, my brain's gone crazy today. Um, and forgive me, but unless you measure is doing it's very difficult for you to tell what your brain is doing <laughs> mm -hmm. actually when you're stressed or anxious you're talking about your experience of of the interior of your mind so we tend to kind of um because of you know advances in neurophysiology in the last few decades we tend to correlate the mind to the brain um that's not to say what's a gnostic view is to some extent asking what's an ancient view and an ancient view doesn't necessarily line the mind up or the soul up with the brain um, in fact, it was more often in, in the Near East, at least in mysticism, it was more often lined up with the heart. Um, legendarily, Greek anatomists um, suspected that the brain might have been a, a kind of heat sink for cooling the body. They <laughs> 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 didn't see it as the seat of intelligence, particularly. Um, right. Oh, sorry to just interrupt. I, I've heard, I I've heard the rumor that the, the Egyptians used to take the brain out and throw it away because they, they thought it was just uh, the... the they didn't think it was important for the afterlife or preserving mummies when they were uh, making mummies. Anyways, Space funny film. observation. <laughs> Plus, it's Space slimy, film. and it's just yeah, you know. it's like gray and pulpy. Yeah. It's just not not fun. Um, so if you know the 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 go to scripture, we tend to at least Father Tony and I <laughs> tend to use. I think when we're trying to ask the question, "What is Gnostic?" Right, is to go to the Secret yes. Book of John. Mm -hmm. um, not to say it, it limits or, or sums anything. But it is unusually detailed on some important questions, and I, I think um, you see this, uh, you see that the basic view in Secret Book of John kind of um, augmented and and uh, extended through the Valentinian scripture, and then you see it take a similar but somewhat different form in the Kabbalah, much 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 later, several centuries later. But we're looking at a view of the world in which the there's not like a ghost and a puppet, where the ghost drives the puppet around. That's, a, that's actually a very modern view of things. That's, a, that's Cartesian dualism, an ancient view. The ancient view is that the human being was, um, um, was discernible as, as multiple different, yeah. well, they talk about multiple different souls. Um, there's the, the material body. There's the, um, the emotional body, if you like, the nefesh in, um, in Kabbalah, but oh, no, in Hebrew, I think, more generally. Um, and then the kind of the higher soul and then the the spirit and and the aspect of the self which is part of god and you see that division of fragments of the self painted pretty clearly in the secret book of john aspects of what are in both adam and eve come from sophia aspects come from 
um, so pro noia um, aspect to crafted the emotional bodies crafted by the chief ruler and his many wicked minions. Um, it's not actually clear where the material body comes from in Secret Book of John. It, it, um, it's just the soul is trapped in it. Mm. Nobody seems to make it. It's just lying around. Right. I might have that wrong. Father Tony will correct me if I'm wrong. But. Well, it's not. It's Yeah, the, the material from which the body is made is vague and, you know, not, not well defined. But they definitely do um, create the four elements in order to trap the soul. Right. And you further right. trap the soul. But what, right. what they create those out of is, yeah. But it's, I could bang on about, we, I mean, there's a in, really interesting conversation about the formation of the body in Secret Book of John, yeah. um, which we might get to, but let's, let's not go too hard too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just find it fascinating that we, um, the, the, as you said, the, the ghost and the puppet, right? That that is such such a dominant view both in science and religion in the West, but it is it is modern. It comes from Descartes, right? But we read right. that back at the ancient text and it's I find it just such an assumption, right? I find myself assuming it and I find I would say ninety nine point nine percent of people I, I meet assume it, but it's it's not in the ancient world view and it's not found in other philosophies and religions. Uh, um so that that's just an observation, but at least my next question: what 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 is the body? How do you how do you define the body, and and how do you define it in sort of through your religious and spiritual lens? Hmm. What is the body? That's a really puzzling question, actually. <laughs> That's a very difficult thing to answer. Um, I mean, because we're moderns, we, we tend to just go straight to a, a physiological answer to the question. But, but I think as Gnostics, I think this is pivotal to being a Gnostic, is that, is that you, you, your go-to needs to be experiential. We shouldn't be taking religious doctrine on faith, and we shouldn't be taking scientific doctrine on faith. It always has to come back to what's my actual experience in this moment. My body is um, my physical body, which I guess is what we're talking about, uh, is my presence in the material world. It's, it's how I'm present in the material world. Um, it's the ways I interact with the, the other things around me. What's the second part of the question? That was it. <laughs> oh, I guess actually that. Uh, we'll, we'll get more into it. Let's, we'll come back to that. But just, just a definition. I mean, we all take it for granted. We know what the body is, right? But oh. maybe we don't. I shouldn't say we all do. So why not talk about it and have uh, a bit of a definition up front, right? So we often think we know what the soul is, particularly when I say we, I mean common Western discourse. But really, when we kind of dig into what is the soul, the question becomes much more complex. And actually, well, we'll stay on, on soul and body and mind, kind of going back a question. Is, is this me, body, me, soul, me, mind just, Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Just, to, oh, just, ahead, just for sorry. two seconds. Let me just stay with that point for a minute, because I think there's something, um, this relationship, the, to, to just really problematize this, this kind of puppet um, you know, puppet ghost dichotomy, which doesn't originate with Descartes, I'm sure. It's just Descartes, you know, popular for popularized the view. Um, it probably goes all the way back to ancient Greece, but probably in ancient Greece, most people thought it was stupid, and only only Descartes managed to kind of give it any kind of intellectual credibility. But but I think something which is obvious if you pay attention to your experience is that while you have the experience of of coming to conclusions and deciding to take actions and then acting with your body. You know, I decide to pick the glass up, and I've picked the glass up. Um, that's your experience of what's happening. But we've also all had the experience of, you know, feeling terrible when we're sick, or feeling um, I get angry when I'm dehydrated, right? So my body's driving my soul as often as my soul's driving my body. Um, you know, I don't know. It takes me. I have to go down a checklist to work out what my moods are about. If I feel depressed or angry, it's like, am I? You know, have I drunk enough water? Um, you know, did I eat? Have I, did I sleep last night? Um, am I feeling sick? You know, like I, I sort of work down the kind of, no, it's not any of those things. Maybe I'm actually depressed. You know, or maybe I'm actually annoyed about something else in life. And then we engage in this really weird process of kind of semi-randomly assigning causes to how we feel. 
which I, I imagine is not just me. I imagine other people do it, but you feel off or you feel weird or you feel sad that day and you start trying to work out, it must be that conversation I had earlier in the day or it must be that. And then sometimes later you work out that it's actually not those first three things you thought of, it's something else. Um, and it's often physical. It often is something that comes up out of the body, which the ancients understood. I mean, they, they talk about the body as the, the seat of the passions because they understood that the... Um, psychic material that drives how you think and feel is coming from the material world. It's coming through the lived experience of the body and um, interacting with the um, the more intellectual and the more intellectual and spiritual impulses coming from the mind. They split mm -hmm. things up a different way to us, but they understood that it, it went in, in different directions. Yeah, and it's interesting the um, the, the, the relationship that you know, body chemistry and, um, you know, kind of lower nerve functions, you know, to, to use a, a modern scientific term, actually inform almost everything that you, almost all of your reactions that, you know, you have in a given day come from somewhere other than the conscious mind, right? So you can right. put that in the, in the realm of the body so that, you know, this idea, even if you're talking about the the ghost driving the car, uh, driving the puppet in a in an abstract sense, it's it's actually mostly the other way around. No, right. Well, it, yeah, it's mostly a um, a storytelling ghost riding around on the back of a dog, right? So that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, m mostly we go about doing what we do for reasons that are a mystery to us, mm -hmm. um, and our conscious mind winds up patching together a rationale for it in hindsight. Um, you know, microseconds after the decisions of the intentionality seems to have been made at, at lower layers of the brain, the frontal cortex is coming up with um, a rationale for why we just decided that. But the part of us that decided that's not the conscious part. I'm making the mistake of drifting backwards and forwards between brain and mind. But, yeah. You know. No, right. <laughs> As we will do throughout this. Because we're moderns, right? Yeah, it's, it's exactly. It's our, it's our prevailing secular mythology. Yeah. Um, actually, let's uh, let's talk a bit about the the way that the that the Valentinians uh, split up these things. And I, I know that we didn't. Um, you and I think a lot in terms of, of Sethian cosmology and and uh, uh, psychology, even if you want to call it that. But the Valentinians had a pretty uh, solid distinction between um, hylic, psychic, and pneumatic, or hylic, or however you want to say that first one. Um, and they used it in a couple of different ways, I believe. Uh, the, the common way that you see is that they broke up uh, groups of people into the hillock, the psychics, and the pneumatics. And the, you know, the people who were completely focused on the body are the hillocks, and the, the people who are um, intellectually engaged or like the regular Christians, quote unquote, would be the, the psychics and the pneumatics, the spiritual people were the Gnostics. Now, uh -huh. a lot of people use that kind of as a, as a weapon to say, hey, we're the pneumatics and all of you Hylix can go, you know, fly a kite or whatever. But I think that that's actually, it's a, that's an oversimplification of how that, that um, trichotomy, I guess you'd say, would have been used. That, you know, mm -hmm. these, are, these are states of consciousness that we all exist in at various points in time, some, some stages more than others. And corresponding them in a, probably a, a, a real sense to the physical body <laughs> for the hyalic, mm. the mind, as we're calling it, for the psychics, and the um, something else <laughs> for the pneumatics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, easier said than done, right? Yeah, I mean, so one way you could, one way you could make sense of that experientially, I think, is that the, the hylix, or hylic experience, if you like, is about um, the direct experience of your physical body. Uh, and, and the physical body's cravings and yearnings and passions. So you're hungry or you're horny or you're thirsty or you're, you know, whatever. I mean, that's all hylic stuff, really. Psychic stuff is about your experience of your, the content of your, your mind, mind slash soul. And it's not, you know, we use the, we throw these terms around in different periods in history and in different schools of thought. 
soul and mind were different things and sometimes they're the same thing and certainly these days we use the reserve soul to talk about you know a spiritual kind of view it's really only spiritual types that talk about souls and scientists are kind of allergic to talking about souls Mm -hmm. um but in older forms of you know it it is called psychology psyche means soul so it's called making sense of the soul really um so the content of that stuff so when you think when you form an opinion when you come to a judgment when you've got a theory um when you feel a feeling so we're feeling a kind of a more a kind of um like a real emotion like joy or sadness or something um that's all psychic material from some sense and so the pneumatic um i think has meant different things for different people it's from pneuma which means spirit um pneuma also means air and breath and atmosphere it meant all those things the same as ruach in hebrew and spiritus in latin um so you could just as easily make it mean space I think um, the space between you and me and the space around us and the space which encloses our lives so you could in experientially use pneumatic experience to be talking about the space in which these experiences the whether they're physical or whether they're psychic experiences are emerging within a space of, of awareness uh, is the the kind of more of a sort of Buddhist way of talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but in a, you know, it's not uncommon for Gnostics to word, use noose, which we translate as mind. In a U.S. Yep. Oh, sorry, I suppose nu, omicron, um, epsilon, <laughs> sigma, I guess, really, if you're going to really spell it. Um, my Greek is awful. Please don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> but noose, the kind of the, the, the vast mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a, there's, so in this moment, you're experiencing the, the physical feeling of your body. You've got some, you know, you've got the experience of your, your bum sitting on a chair and your spine's kind of lying back against the back of the chair. You can move your hands around and feel them. There's the experience of, you know, the position that your head and your face are in and where your neck's sitting on your shoulders. Um, there's probably some interior feelings. Maybe you can feel your heartbeat if you feel very carefully, but you can probably feel whatever you ate last, kind of working its way through your digestive system. Um, Maybe there's a feeling of comfort or discomfort in the abdomen. These are all physical. That's all physical content. And simultaneously, you're listening to what I'm saying, and you're probably having thoughts of your own, and you're probably coming up with what ifs and yes buts, and um, maybe you're annoyed by it or pleased by it, or um, you know, maybe something's gone on before you sat down to watch this or listen to it, and and you're a bit sad or angry or something from something that's happened before. Um, so you're aware of all this kind of interior content that's not in the physical body but it's part of your psychic experience um but also in this moment you're also aware that you're aware so you're aware that your awareness contains these things you're aware that there's that aspect of your experience in this present moment that isn't about content it's not about your physical feeling it's not about the interior content of your mind there's you are aware you are awareness there's some vast spaciousness right now in which all that is arising. So to me, that's what we're talking about when we talk about pneuma and pneumatic, mm-hmm. the pneumatic dimension of the human being. Your, <laughs> the theosophist might say, your causal body. Mm. <laughs> the unobserved observer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's... The- uh, so you, <laughs> this is hard to talk about, man. <laughs> <laughs> that that should be sorry. The I, kind of, I just the I just went right there. I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> uh, right. It, you know, it's it's like that. The way that I've put it in the past, and and it's those fleeting moments of awareness of it. Uh, you know, like on a kind of I I would even say gnosis level awareness of it, where you hmm. say that I am aware that there are thoughts happening. I can observe those thoughts objectively. Um, those thoughts are not me, quote unquote, mm-hmm. whatever whatever I am in this context. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know, and I, I think that that's a, uh, a really kind of profound spiritual moment to have. Um, and, and it's one of the 
one of the easier things to do, I think, if you, you know, meditating on that particular process. Yeah, yeah exactly. Who's, a, who's aware of this? <laughs> right. What, who's being aware? What is awareness? Who is being who's aware? it happening right. to? And what? <laughs> right. One of the, I think, I think one of the most, the most valuable. I mean, one of the most massive contributions of of Zen to modern thought um, is that I think in the West we tend to think of these things as like advanced spiritual states that are, you know, off with the, off with the angels, kind of up in the celestial realms. And I think um, modern Buddhism's been, you know, there's been a move in the last twenty years to to really say this is just it's here right now this is really ordinary you are aware you know that open awareness is is here right now it is what is aware of this moment it's not some you know we, we vary in our capacity to notice it or to stabilize in that perspective or to whatever but it's not off with the fairies somewhere it's right here well that does it for part one everybody in part two we're going to continue our conversation with bishop mansfield about awareness techniques and how they kind of affect the body we're going to talk about jansenism and kind of a body spirit dualism and a kind of body hating uh tradition that sprung up out of his thought and we're going to talk about uh overcoming the passions and a bit about asceticism and uh, all that and more is coming up on part two, which will be released next week. If you are uh, enjoying this content and you'd like to see more of it and you'd like to see us uh, expand our programming, please do go over to uh, patreon.com slash gnostic. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash gnostic. And uh, support us in, uh, in your, however you can. Uh, a little bit of money goes a long way, so if you can help us out there, that's great. Also, don't forget to subscribe to either our YouTube channel or our podcast at GnosticWisdom.net. You won't want to miss anything that's coming up. Uh, the rest of these conversations with Bishop Mansfield are really very uh, deep and insightful, and I know you won't want to miss them. So stick around, and we'll see you next week.